Hello everyone and welcome to the second installment in Progress Largmas. This installment is hopefully going to be vastly superior to the first because it's going to include pattern drafting and hat making and actual sewing as opposed to just talking about sewing and filming the process of filming other videos which is mostly what the last video consisted of and I'm not sure it was super interesting. But this time around I'm going to be finishing some hats, I'm going to be draping some patterns, I'm going to be starting on a new project and hopefully finishing up a few as well. It is currently December 9th and I spent last night sewing all of the binding onto the brims of my hats. I'll insert some footage of that now. The last time you saw these, they were all completely flat pieces that I'd finished lining. So I went through and marked the overlap points on the crown pieces, and then I used binder clips to hold the pieces in position. I also went through and pulled out thread that matched all the pieces for when I'm sewing them together later on. And then on the cap pieces, I made sure to mark the front and back points so I can get those lined up with the front and back points on the crown when I'm sewing them. So I marked those on the crown pieces as well. Uh, and then I sewed binding onto these pieces. So I cut a whole bunch of two inch wide strips on the bias or diagonal grain of the fabric and then I stitched on one end and I folded the other end inward by a half inch and then I folded it over the edge of the brim and pinned it so it aligns with the stitch point from the other side of the binding. We'll see if I can get my camera to focus. So you can see the stitches that secure the one side of the binding on and then I've just aligned the folded edge of the binding with those stitches uh, so it'll cover it when it is whip stitched down. They were all going to have a half inch wide bias binding around the edges but for this one since it has the point I couldn't get that to work. So I ended up doing quarter inch binding instead. Uh, and you can kind of see where some of the threads from my previous half inch wide binding attempt are. I've got to pick all of those out later. And then for the Edwardian hat, I'm doing a band of bias cut trim that is half an inch wide, but was originally cut to be one inch wide. And then the edges were turned inward by a quarter inch on either side. And this is just running two inches away from the perimeter of the brim. And then like with all the other ones, I have to sew the binding down on the inner edge. So now I have one hat completely finished and the other two are well on their way to being done, which I'm personally very excited about. And and it leaves room and time to devote to other projects, like my two Christmas projects that I'm hoping to get done this week. I'd also like to get my writing habit inspired project drafted and hopefully get started on it too. I think that's going to be the primary focus of this video. And then I'd like to get the capes for my Christmas projects drafted as well. And then that can be the focus of the next progress Logmas. So yesterday was all about skirts. I managed to get the 1630 skirt cut out and pleated and sewn onto the bodice, which I'm really happy about. And the reason that I could do that was because the shoes for the project arrived, so I finally knew how long it needed to be. In addition to getting the 1630 skirt sewn on, I also finished sewing all of the trim onto the Regency skirt, which took me like three hours. I have no idea why it took so long, but it took ages. And now I can actually get the Regency skirt gathered down and sewn onto the bodice, but before doing that I have to sew the remaining sleeve on the bodice, and then I have to do a fitting so I know what to gather the skirt down to. I'm not really looking forward to any of those things. It was also extra discouraging last night because I've been trying to work on the undersleeves to go with the 1630s dress and I really hate the ones I ended up making. So it's kind of a mixture of this lace and then this metallic uh, chiffon that I had. It's really hard because the satin for this project is like a warm slightly off white but it's not quite ivory. So a lot of the trims in my stash are either too light for it or too dark for it and it also doesn't pair well with the fabric that I originally bought to make a chemise for it. The fabric just looks kind of great by comparison. And then I bought this lace for it but it's pure white and I think they look kind of odd together. So I've gone through like all of my lace trim and chiffon stash and I think I'm going to try remaking the sleeves out of this. Instead of having a ruffle at the bottom, I think I'm just going to make the sleeves longer and then have it gathered fitted to a cuff, because that seems more historically accurate from the examples I was looking at this morning. I feel very stuck with the sleeves of this project because I made them about three inches too short, but I don't have enough fabric left for me to redo them. So I'm just trying to come up with some sort of cuff situation that will salvage how they look and will weigh them down a little bit and make them appear longer, but also look somewhat historically accurate. And it's just been a big pain. But I have enough of this lace left that I could do something with that on the sleeve remake, then I think I'm also going to try and incorporate this lace trim. I've had this in my stash for ages. I actually purchased it for a Sakuzo gown that I wore to KatsuCon four or five years ago something like that. Uh, so it's been sitting in my stash for ages. So it's kind of nice to finally have a use for it. And then I really like this trim because it's got the ivory and the white tones in it. And I like this one too, but I'm not sure that they're really gonna fit in with what I have planned. So that'll be something that I figure out later today. But priority number one has to do with this dress and getting the sleeve onto the bodice and doing a bodice fitting uh, so I can fit the skirt to the band at the bottom of the bodice. Also, it is snowing today and it's beautiful. Look at how pretty it is. And someone in my last video was asking where these gel 
jellyfish are from and they're actually Christmas ornaments that I got from Michaels. They were like three bucks each and they came in pink and blue which are my sewing room colors. I thought I'd hang them inside my window and it would look like they're floating. I just finished up the new cuffs. This is what we were working with before. I used a golden ivory chiffon and then I used some trim but I sewed it on after gathering the cuff so instead of sitting upright it was like flopping over and covering up the lace that I stitched on to use as a channel for ribbon which gathers the cuff further and secures it in place around the arm. I just hate how this looks like I really really don't like it. And these are how the new ones turned out and I love them so much. I'm really glad that I decided to redo these and that I dug through my stash and really played around with lace trims. I haven't done that in a long time. I haven't raided my stash like that. It was really enjoyable and I'm really happy with what I ended up with so I'm feeling very pleased. Then this time around I gathered the lace while I was gathering the bottom edge of the fabric. So it's a lot more prone to staying up because the gathers at the hem support it. So it's not going to flop down. And I'm very pleased with this. So now I'm going to get my dress off the dress form. Though I'm not sure this can really be considered on the dress form. And get the new sleeves sewn on. And that'll be one thing I can check off my list. And then I'm actually going to start in the stomacher, which is currently pinned up there. I'm going to start sewing hooks into it. So yesterday was pretty productive. Look at what I finished. Uh, after I finished sewing on all of the trim, I just hemmed it. And then I sewed a band around the waist. Or no. Then I I gathered down the skirt and sewed it onto the bodice and then I sewed a band around the waist and sewed closures into the back and now the dress is completely finished. I am planning on making something inspired by court trains and ropes that were worn in the very early 1800s and I'm going to be using this fabric which is a striped sequin mesh and I actually want to figure out whether I need a lining for this or whether I like how it looks over the dress on its own. So that's something I want to do today because if it does need lining then I might have to go out to Joanne's anyway. Last night I didn't film much because I actually went out to Michael's and Walmart and a couple other places trying to find pearls that would work for this project. Got the undersleeve sewn on and then I sewed hooks into this side and I sewed hooks onto the stomacher as well. So now all that's left is decorating the stomacher and then sewing the other side onto this edge. And then the hem is now sewn. There's a bit of a blue cast here from where I marked the hem and unfortunately it doesn't seem to want to come out. It was supposed to be a water soluble crayon. I specifically used it because I didn't think it would show through the fabric, whereas my water-soluble marker does. But I know my water-soluble marker is actually water-soluble, but it appears this crayon is not, despite what it says. So I think I'm just going to have to deal with the blue cast, because if I try and get it out, uh, I think it's going to cause damage to the fabric. It's going to show up as marks, even just using a gentle cloth to rub at it. I might try that on a sample and see what it does, uh, and then potentially attempt that on the hem. But for now, I'm calling the hem finished. So the next step for this to finish it is decorating the stomacher, but I can't do that yet because I don't have pearls that match it. These are the pearls I originally bought for it. They're eight millimeters and I have a crap ton of them and they're glass and they're beautiful quality, but they're really white, like so white that they look blue and they just don't go with the warm white color of this fabric. And I think I complained about this when I was talking about lace trims for the sleeves earlier, that this fabric isn't ivory. It's like an off white slash warm white. So a lot of the things within my stash that are ivory are too dark for it. And a lot of things that are white are too light for it. And that's the situation with these pearls. So last night at Michael's, I managed to find these and I don't have enough of them but they're a much better color. I still don't think they're perfect like they still have a vaguely greenish cast to it which I don't like. I don't know if that's going to show up on camera but it's pretty prominent in person. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my dress form and then I'm going to pin the pearls over top of it and see what I think. If I feel like it's passable then I'll try going to another Michaels and getting more of the same. And if I don't like how it looks, then I'm going to try going to Joann's and seeing if they have something better. In which case, I could also get lining for this and potentially lining for the cape I'm going to make for my Christmas project. Which is this dress, because this is also going to have a cape, uh, or even a cloak really. But the fabric is a velvet that's been applied to a mesh, so it is kind of sheer. So I want to play around with it a little bit once I have this on dress form to see if I need to pick up a lining for that too. So this is the dress on the dress form, and the dress form that I'm using for this is one that's like five inches smaller than me. Seriously, I wish this dress fit me this way, but it does not. It is tight on me. <laughs> Uh, I actually had to pad the neckline out with shoulder pads because this is done in a traditional S-bend style. So it's got a very, very narrow waist and it's actually got relatively narrow shoulders as well. So I actually bought it because it has such unique proportions. It means I can fit garments that uh, wouldn't fit on my other dress forms because they only fit me when I'm wearing specific foundations. So it's a display dress form that I use just for displaying garments, not for drafting them. And then I still have this one over here still in the dress form. So I'm going to get out the cape fabrics or the cloak fabrics I'll be using alongside these garments and just try to draping them over top and playing around a little bit. Also for this one I'm going to pin on the pearls and see what I think of that. I still don't really know how I feel. I definitely like how this one looks better but I feel like it has a yellowish cast that doesn't quite work. But I think I'm going to ask my mom's opinion and then I'll figure out what I'm doing. <laughs> so I've decided that I like the lower option of the pearls. I just don't have enough of them. So I'm going to go to a Michael's 
in a bit, like in half an hour, and see if I can get more of them. And then my mom's actually driving past to Michael's today, so she's going to see if they have more of them there too. I also did a little test with the velvet I'll be using for the cape that goes over top of this. And once it's gathered, it's definitely opaque enough that it doesn't need a lining. Also, for this one, I did a test, and I actually like how you can see a little bit of the dress through the fabric. And since it's not going to have a very long train, since I can only make it as long as the width of the fabric, I think it's going to be fine without lining. However, I am interested in finding a trim to go around the hem. So I'm going to bring a swatch of it with me to Michael's. Maybe they'll have a Christmassy ribbon that will work for that. Before I go, I'm just going to do some gluing. So the next step for this project before it's like done done is adding the beads to the stomacher and then making both a necklace to wear with the project as well as a belt and a sash that are made out of these rhinestones. So you'll see these in a lot of portraits in this period and I ordered some green stones and some cameo frames to try and hodgepodge something together that looks reminiscent of what was worn historically yet costs much much less. I have some fresh E6000 that just came in from Amazon so I'm going to glue the stones into the frames uh, and then they can dry while I'm out or at least partially dry while I'm out and then I can come back home and start working on something else like maybe the writing habit. as much as I wanted to last night even though I got quite a bit of work done because after I came home from my trip to Michael's I actually had to go out to another Michael's and then I came home with all of the beads I needed to start on the beading pattern that will be featured on the 17th century project. Before I did that I decided to do a little bit more research. So I used a lot of references when I was designing this 17th century project. There's definitely one that really stuck out and was definitely my main source of inspiration at least when it came to jeweled trim that I planned on making for it and that's a portrait of Queen Henrietta Maria that was painted in 1638 by Anthony Van Dyke. Now when I'm designing a project I usually use a lot of visual references and then I purchase the materials that I need and the trims that I need and then as I start working on that project I do more research about the history behind it and how to actually construct it. And for this project I knew roughly how to construct it so I felt comfortable moving forward with it without doing a ton of research but I have this book which has a whole section on jewelry so I thought it might have some insight into what these jeweled things actually were. And didn't have anything on them at all which I thought was a little weird since there are quite a few portraits that feature these. But then I flipped to the portion about how dress was featured in painting and it says this. About 1630 in England it became increasingly fashionable for women depicted in a style of dress that differed from fashionable clothing. Firstly Van Dyck and subsequently Peter Lely were the leading proponents of this style. Although the two artists took different approaches in their attribute to depicting female attire, each played a role of stylist modifying the dress of the sitter for this portrayal in paint. The fact was not a conscious attempt by the artist to place the sitter outside their era and thus achieve timelessness. Instead it was the means by which their costume would best fit into Van Dyck's preferred aesthetic during this period. Period, one that emphasized simplicity, informality, and elegance over fussiness and detail. By removing certain elements of fashionable clothing such as lace collars and cuffs and deliberately choosing plainer silks, Van Dyck softened and simplified the dress of his sitters focusing on color and balance to achieve an overall effect of harmony rather than recording every detail of fashionable dress and accessories. The effect is more commonly seen in his later work, such as the portrait of Henrietta Maria in 1638. Van Dyck also added jewels in places where they were not worn, for example his fastenings on sleeves and around the shoulder seam. He leaves off fashionable accessories such as fans and muffs in favor of softly fluttering scarves, often arranged asymmetrically across the body. Now there are tons, like hundreds of paintings from this period that depict dresses worn without collars, so I don't feel particularly bad about omitting that from my design, but it does mean that the jeweled sash that I was seeing in some of these paintings probably never existed. So I basically went on this hunt yesterday to find materials to make something that was never real. So I think I'm still going to include it in my dress because my dress is more based on the examples shown in paintings than it is anything else, but I feel thoroughly duped and now I feel a little bit more uncertain about how to move forward because if these jeweled sashes didn't exist and they aren't a traditional coronation garment or accessory or anything like that, they could be a little bit more creative with the placement of it. So I think I'm going to think on that for a little bit. As I said last night, I was working on these shoes, so I got some ruffles, binder clipped, and hopefully glued onto these shoes for 
for the Regency project, and then I also painted the shoes for the 17th century project. I was planning on painting these just to get a white base and then putting velvet over top of it. That's because I bought acrylic paint because the oil-based paint that was flexible had a one-week curing time and I didn't want to wait that long. So I think I'm going to have to cover these with satin and then cover them with the velvet, which is fine. I can do that. That's just not what I planned on doing. So I'll have to figure that out later. But for the most part, what I'm going to work on today is my habit shirt, which is a relatively simple half shirt that will be worn underneath my writing habit. I ended up working on this quite a lot last night, but I didn't film much of the process. I think I only filmed assembling the lace that goes onto the ruffles because I was still so pissed off about Van Dyke horribly betraying me, even though he's been dead for 400 years. But I'm going to try and get over that today and focus on filming a little bit more. But first, I got these little unicorn ornaments from Walmart, put these on the tree, do a bit of tidying up, and then get back to the habit flaps. I hope the other unicorns accept them into their pack. Actually, before I get into the day, I'm going to make a list. So this was for December 11th, and I think I actually finished all of these things. This is satisfying as hell, isn't it? That felt really good. <laughs> so now let's make one for December 13th, which is the day it currently is. And I'm going to try and do this in order of plans a little bit. And then at 12.15 I have a psychiatrist appointment and before that I would like to sew buttonholes into habiture, sew on the sleeve, sew on the collar, add drawstring, and finish habiture. Can I do that in two hours? I'm not sure. I don't know if I mentioned this but it's currently 10.18 and usually I like to get to work at around 9. I decided to shower this morning because I might dye my hair tonight. You have to have clean dry hair in order to dye your hair with semi-permanent dyes. And also I was reading a really good fan fiction. I wanted to finish it before I came up to work. So by then it was 9.30 and I just sat and browsed Reddit for half an hour because it was really cold up here and I found this video about a cougar playing with a toy that like totally made my morning despite this whole Anthony Van Dyke situation. Anyway, long story short, I'm getting a late start today so I'm not sure how much I'll be able to accomplish before my 12-15 appointment, but my appointment's only 15 minutes long, so it shouldn't really get in the way of the day too much. And then after, I want to draft both cloaks for the Christmassy projects. So I'll put Regency cloak first. I always put the sleeves second because they're like a whole project in themselves. Draft 1630s cloak, draft 1630s sleeve. And then I also have to order prints today. And you know what? If I'm drafting, then I'm going to put habit vest on here. And those will just be roughly drafted because they're going to extend beyond the waistline, which means they'll go over top of the skirt, which means the skirt needs to be constructed first because uh, the volume that the skirt provides is going to change how they have to be drafted. But I don't want to cut up the skirt until I know approximately how much material the jacket's going to take because I have eight yards of fabric. And though that seems like a lot of fabric, it's only 42 inches wide. So the skirt alone is probably going to take three 50 inch panels of it. Uh, so I just want to know approximately how much material I'll need to set aside for the jacket before I figure out how many panels I'm going to use for the skirt. So that is my list and now let's just get started because there's quite a lot there isn't there? So let me update you on the habit shirt situation. I have a sketch in here somewhere. This is what I was going for and I draped the front and back panels on my dress form and then the sleeves and the gores underneath the sleeves are just a series of rectangles and squares. After draping everything on my dress form, I transfer it to tissue paper and add seam allowances. I can't remember if I filmed that, but if I did, I will definitely include the footage of it now. And then last night, I actually got to work cutting it out and assembling it. The fabric for this is a silk that I purchased from Hamad's Fabrics in the Garment District. If you go, tell them that the girl from YouTube sent you because that's what they know me as. And then they might give you better prices and they might give me better prices. And it's just a win-win situation. Over here, I have the front panels that I've cut out. I also turned the front edge inward by half inch twice. The ruffles are just rectangles and then I gathered the long edge of the rectangle down and I also gathered one of the short edges of the ruffle to form a finished curved edge at the neckline. The ruffles actually face outward so once the collar is on they will swoosh together and form almost the appearance of a cravat because there's going to be a lot of volume where they meet. Or at least that's the plan. I've never actually done this before so that's what I'm hoping will happen. And the trim for these ruffles is a mixture of lace trims that I had in my stash. A very narrow vintage lace trim that I picked up at an antique store in Canada. It's new old stock, so it came with its original packaging, which is really cool. Uh, so I have 36 yards of that, and I used about four yards of it for this project. And then onto that, I sewed this other vintage lace I have in my stash. So I just stitched the edges of them together. Before sewing the lace trim onto the ruffles, I stitched this gold trim over top of the finished edge of the rectangles that then formed the ruffle. And then I top stitched both sides of the narrow lace trim that I was using. So it goes over top of the gold trim and dulls the effect of it, but you can still 
still see some of the metallic nature through it. So to me, it almost looks like there's metallic embroidery uh, around the edges of the ruffles, which I think is a really neat addition. And hopefully this will complement the gold trims that I use on the jacket that will be worn with this later on. Over here, I have the sleeves, which as I said, are just rectangles. Then there are triangles sewn onto either side. I turned the bottom like six inches of the sleeve inward twice by a quarter inch and then top stitched it down by machine. And that's so I can add the closures, which are a buttonhole. It's a very poorly sewn buttonhole. This fabric wasn't reinforced enough to sew buttonholes. So every time I stitched with enough tension to get the stitches themselves to look nice, it ended up pulling the fabric and skewing the buttonhole to one side. And the other side is finished as well. So I will sew a button on there and then I can sew up the side seam of the sleeve with a French seam and just taper the seam allowance off uh, towards the finished portion. I'm sewing this mostly by machine just for the sake of time. I've got like a week to finish this and that's mostly the reason to be honest. I'd rather invest more time into the hand finishing on the jacket and the vest and the garments that you're actually going to see as opposed to something where you're just going to see a little bit of the collar and a little bit of the cuffs. But speaking of the cuffs, I assembled these by top stitching a band of twill tape onto the lower edge of the sleeve and then trimming the excess seam allowance and I just repeated that process with the ruffle and I top stitched a cuff over top of the twill tape. So it's neatly finished on the interior and exterior. So now I just need to pick buttons for this. I was originally going to use these gold buttons, but they don't quite match the trim, and I feel like shell buttons would actually be nicer for this. And I already looked through my button boxes, which you'll see a video on organizing very soon, and I couldn't find anything that would work, so I think I have to break out the button binders. This is my white and cream button binder, and I can't remember if I also have white and cream shell buttons in here or not. I'd like to use shell buttons because those would be more historically accurate, and I'm already using a silk for this. These would all work really nicely, but again, I've got like 12 of them, so I'd rather save that for a project where I need a dozen. I'd like them to be shank buttons if I could, but I don't know that I have any that are small enough. Like these are shank buttons, but they're too big. These are shank buttons, but they're too small. These might end up working. Those are shank buttons that look just right. These look good too, and I have four of them, which is the perfect quantity. Now the question is if they fit into the buttonholes that I've already sewn, and they do. So those are gonna be our winners. <laughs> Alright, so it is now almost 1 o'clock and I still haven't checked anything off my list today, but I did have my psychiatrist appointment, my phone appointment, and I've graduated, so now I'm only talking to her every three months, which is really exciting. So anyway, I just went ahead and I gathered the top edges and the bottom edges of the front panels of the habit shirt. So the next step is going to be sewing the shoulder seam, and I'm going to sew that as a French seam, and then I can figure out what to do about the collar, and then I can sew the sleeves on. I originally cut the collar pattern to be two inches wide plus seam allowances, but now I'm thinking of making it a bit narrower just because I think that would be more flattering. So I'm going to play around with it a little bit once I can actually try the shirt on and I have the shoulder seam sewn. So now I have both my heater and my sewing machine on, so it's gonna be noisy in here. But after I went ahead and gathered down the top and bottom edges, I just sewed the collar interfacing on, or the collar base on. So what I'm using to reinforce the collar is something called band roll, and it's traditionally put into waistbands of garments to prevent them from rolling. So it stiffens the waistband and feels almost like a very lightweight buckram or starched lightweight canvas. In addition to serving as a base that gives the collar support, it's also going to serve as the collar lining. This will be top stitched over top of the band roll and all of the edges will be tucked between the band roll and between the outer layer of fabric uh, so they won't fray. So I'm going to get the collar on and then I can work buttonholes into the collar and make sure it fits okay and then I can sew the sleeves on uh, and it'll start coming together and looking like a shirt or at least that is my hope. So I ended up doing a pretty poor job of documenting this, but I think I filmed a little bit, so hopefully you've seen all of that footage. And now it is finished, and this is what it looks like. So I sewed the sleeves on with a French seam, and then I sewed up the side seams with a French seam, and that pretty much finished it off. I also made a necktie for this. I just did this by cutting two 7 inch by 42 inch strips, seaming them together at the back, and then folding them in half lengthwise, and stitching along the long edge with, with the right sides together. So this is it without the sash. My buttonholes at the collar are pretty poor too. 
uh, but I'm overall quite happy with it. I really like how the ruffle sits at the front. And then the bottom edge was just finished with bias binding and I left the front ends of the bias binding open so I could thread ribbon through it to create a drawstring that takes the back in slightly. Uh, so it just gathers it down a little bit to fit the waist of whatever stays you're wearing. So that is it for the habit shirt, which means I can now move on to the vest and the jacket and getting those draped. I'd also like to drape the cloaks for these two projects, uh, the Regency dress and the 1630s dress. I don't know if that's going to end up happening tonight. This is definitely going to be priority number one because, as I said, I want to get the skirt cut out and start working on that so I can finalize the jacket pattern. But first, I have to figure out approximately how much fabric the jacket will take. I've got my design for it over here. I ended up simplifying the design quite a lot just because I didn't have the time or materials to really go forward with my original very elaborate design. So I'm basing this off of a painting of two young girls, actually, who are wearing these really interesting habits from the early 18th century. And I'm going to be using a variety of foundation garments, including a bum roll and a very full petticoat to try and get that early 18th century silhouette, which was still very rounded and quite full. Also, this skirt, uh, which is based on a 1860s cantoneer costume, or that's what it was constructed for, is going to be my stand-in for the skirt I'll end up making for this project. So this is what I'll be draping the jacket over top of, and it's cartridge pleated, it's made out of a wool, so I think the amount of volume it has is quite similar to the skirt that will ultimately end up going underneath this project. So I spent the last half hour doing some draping, and I draped what's going to be the bodice pattern for the cloak that will be worn with this dress. So I still have to do a mock-up of that and then drape, or rather draft, the sleeve pattern for it. And I think I'm going to use the sleeve pattern used for the dress as a base, and then just shorten it, uh, and it's not going to be gathered at the hem. Straight hem, and it will be gathered at the shoulder. And then I also draped the vest and the jacket pattern over top of my foundation garment cocktail we have going on here that looks really funny. That's what it looks like from the front and I should be able to transfer this to paper and figure out approximately how much fabric it will take and then be able to cut out the skirt tonight. I just had to take a break to feed my dogs and I think now I'm going to take a break to dye my hair and then do some editing in front of the TV while it processes. Let's do that and then hopefully I will be back up to work tonight but sometimes hair dye does bleed when your hair is wet and most of what I have in progress are projects that are white. I might just take an evening and completely devote it to editing because I haven't edited either of the videos about making these dresses. I haven't even imported all of the footage, so it might be good to take some time to really focus on that. I've been listening to the first Full Dark book while I've been working today, and I've gone through like four hours of it, and I'm really enjoying it. So I think I'll keep that on while I dye my hair, and then I can listen to that while I'm editing later tonight as well. So that should keep me amused and occupied during tasks that are less traditionally exciting. While I was sleeping, something horrible has occurred. It appears that Toothless and Hiccup have fallen, and now we must rescue them. They're supposed to live up there, but it looks like the command hook that holds them up fell, so I have to place the sticky back on that and then get them hung up again and then get to work. Don't worry, I fixed it. Everyone's happily back together and there were no serious injuries. Also, I dyed my hair, so now it's kind of like this purplish, reddish brown color and I'm very pleased with it. I want it to be brighter, but I also want to take costume photos and have my hair look vaguely natural-ish, so I feel like this is a good compromise for now. So I was going to transfer everything to paper today because I was a little bit worried about working on this project since it's white satin and I dyed my hair purple last night and sometimes the pigment is really prone to transferring but I don't seem to be having that issue so I went ahead and draped the cloak that will go over top of the 1630s project and the bodice of it was pretty easy to drape. It's just a simple fitted bodice with a side seam. Uh, it's going to be cut on a fold at the back and it's going to tie closed at the front but I'm trying to incorporate a hood into the collar. So the hood is gathered and then attaches to the edge of the collar and the collar actually lifts up when the hood is put up. So I was just trying to drape the hood, which isn't really something you're supposed to drape. So I put one of my balsa hat blocks onto the neck of my dress form and I've just been fiddling around with gathering placement, trying to get something that works. So I think I'm going to move forward to transferring all of these to paper. So I've got the cloak bodice that will be for the Regency project. I've got the cloak bodice for the 1630s project. I've got the vest for the riding habit and the coat for the riding habit. Uh, and after that's all transferred to paper, I can decide whether I want to move forward and make mock-ups for everything or if I want to focus on making the writing habit skirt. I'm not quite sure, it just kind of depends on what I'm in the mood for.
So at this point, I have finished transferring all of the patterns onto paper. I also ended up drafting a little chemise pattern for the 1630s project, which will just give a little bit of modesty, uh, and the neckline's gonna flare out and kind of form a collar. It's not particularly historically accurate, but it's kind of a combination of the simplified paintings I originally based my design off of, as well as what would have actually been worn in the 1630s. So I think it's a good balance, and I'm excited to work on that. But I've decided to work on the riding habit instead. So I laid my pattern pieces out on to fabric and set aside an additional yard of material for the sleeves and then I had about 190 ish inches left so I decided to make my skirt panels 52.5 inches long and I cut out three of them and that gives me an additional yard in case I mess up or also that I can use to make a matching hat. So I'm pretty pleased with how that went and I just seamed the three panels I cut out together. I seamed them salvage to salvage so I didn't have to finish the edges and I just sewed them with a one inch seam allowance and then ironed the seam open. I also left the top 11 inches of two of the seams open. Even though I didn't sew this as a actual seam, I decided to turn the seam allowance inward by an inch. It blends in pretty nicely with the rest of the seam despite being left open. So what I'm actually going to do, which is going to make this not blend in at all, is sew some trim around the opening. I just think that'll be a nice little addition, even though you're not really going to end up seeing it once the vest and the jacket are worn. So sewing this on by hand is also going to secure the seam allowance I've turned inward down. So that's going to be the next step, and then I'm going to turn the top edge inward by two inches and start marking the cartridge pleats, and I can sew the cartridge pleats, and then I can sew it onto a waistband, and then I can do a fitting, and then I can sew eyelets into the waistband, and then I can hem it, and then I can sew trim onto the hem. It sounds so easy when you explain it in 30 seconds. So I've already cartridge pleated the front of the skirt. Now I'm pleating the back panels. Started by marking a line three inches away from the top edge of the skirt, and then I folded the raw edge to meet that line. And I think I filmed that process, so hopefully you saw me doing that. And then I measured one inch away from the now folded edge, and that's one of the cartridge pleat points. And the other is going to be about an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge. I'm just going to do the placement of that by eye. And the cartridge pleats are about five eighths of an inch apart. It's not perfectly even, but it was much faster to do it this way than to go along with the ruler and make sure everything was perfect, so I'm fine with how it is. So now I'm going to pleat this down to 20 inches, so each 42 inch panel is gathered down to 10 inches. And do that just by stitching through each of these points that I've marked, both at the top of the fold and at that one inch point. And I'm going to film this too, so you'll see it in process, action, slash, you get what I'm saying. When I'm done, I can sew it to a waistband and then I can try it on and figure out the length of hem and do a fitting for the jacket mock-up, which I haven't made yet, and the vest mock-up, which I also haven't made yet, and it'll be very exciting. So at this point I've finished cartridge pleating the skirt. I pleated the back on camera and then I did the front panel off camera first but I ended up unpicking it after doing the back panels and redoing it and making the pleats a little bit wider because they just looked a little bit smushed before. And now I'm really really happy with how it looks. It's gathered down to the measurements it needs to be. So I went ahead and made the waistband and it consists of two pieces. One that will attach to the front panel and one that will attach to the two back panels. This one is nine and a half inches and this one is 19 inches. So now it is time to pin these onto the skirt and then whip stitch them together. When you're working with cartridge pleats, you want to finish the edges of the waistband and finish the top edge of the skirt before you sew them. So these aren't going to be stitched together with the traditional seam allowance. Instead, I'm going to be lining up the edges and whip stitching them together with really tiny stitches. And I'm probably going to do this off camera just because I like kind of having it right up against me and right on my lap as I do it, and that tends to be difficult to capture on film. But I'll definitely show you what it looks like when it's done. However, I have bad news. My neck is getting a little bit sore and and it's almost time to feed my dogs. And I think instead of trying to tick off all the things on my to-do list today, which involved making mock-ups and fitting mock-ups, uh, I might just take tonight and do a whole bunch of editing because the video you are currently watching is supposed to go up tomorrow and I haven't even imported all of the footage onto my laptop. And I filmed two making of videos this week and I haven't even finished importing all the footage from those onto my laptop either. And I wanna get those edited and posted in the next 10 days. So I don't think it would be a bad idea to spend like five hours focusing on that tonight. I'm definitely going to finish this first so I can at least get the skirt on the dress form and show you what that looks like before I finish off this video. And before doing that, I have to get the waistband on, so that is going to be my next task. So now the waistband is sewn on. I don't know if I mentioned how I constructed the waistband, but it's just a strip of the wool that has all of its edges turned inward, and then I whip stitched it, or slip stitched it rather, to a linen tape. It's sort of like twill tape, but it's made out of linen, so it's a slightly looser weave. I just like using it on historical projects because it looks a little bit more weathered and historically accurate, even though I think they're both fine. Uh, so that gave it some more structural integrity and holds the folded edges of the wool inward. And then, as I said, I just whip stitched that to the cartridge pleats. My camera doesn't want to focus on it. 
Um, and they're not perfectly even, but I think they look okay. So they're stitched together in this position, and that's what it looks like from the inside, and then that's what it looks like from the outside. And because of the way this is sewn, the waistband sits flat against your body, and so do the pleats. And the pleats create quite a bit of volume since they're so densely sewn. So it's a really nice way to give a skirt a lot of volume near the waist, and then you can pat out the hems with petticoats or whatever you please. So I'm going to stick this on my dress form just to give you an idea of how it looks. They're the best I can do without actually trying it on, and I don't really want to put the stays on right now. Uh, I'd rather save that for tomorrow when I have the mock-ups ready to fit for the vest and the jacket. All right, so this doesn't look quite how I hoped it would. Uh, the side panels that I left open to allow you to access pockets that are worn underneath the dress but over top of the petticoat are gaping a little bit more than I th thought they would. Uh, I think it mostly has to do with the shape of this dress since it's worn over top of a bum roll. I might end up having to add some hooks to those, but I'm going to wait until I do a fitting to decide. Uh, these aren't going to be visible anyway because the skirt of the jacket will cover them. It's just if you take off the jacket, I don't want you to be able to see like giant bits of petticoat through the skirt slits. So that is something to address later, but that is the problem for tomorrow. And the problem for today is feeding my dog, taking a shower, editing like eight hours worth of footage, and then probably going to sleep. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow or later tonight if I'm feeling like super duper ambitious. Also, this is what the back looks like. I'm much happier with the back than the front, uh, but I do think they both look pretty decent. I really like the amount of volume it has and how it kind of falls to the hem. I was worried that the skirt might be too narrow to fit over top of these petticoats, but I think it looks pretty good. However, I'm not like 100% certain on the silhouette. I might end up removing the bum roll. It just kind of depends on how I'm feeling. Uh, I'm gonna play around with foundations a little bit more when I do the fitting tomorrow. And also this dress form is way too short. It's about five inches shorter than I am and I can't adjust it because it's like rusted at this height. <laughs> so that's why the hem is so long. I'll fix that later. And once the hem is actually hemmed, I'm going to sew more of this sparkly sequin trim on. I'm also going to sew on some fringe. So it should be very pretty and sparkly and spangly and wonderful. So I didn't make it back up to the sewing room last night, but I did make a whole bunch of editing progress. I got the video about my Regency dress down from seven and a half hours of footage to half an hour of footage. So now I can write the voiceover for that and make some more progress on that. And I also did the majority of the editing for the video you're currently watching. So I'm very pleased with that and I'm very pleased with what I accomplished this week just in general. I don't think I'm going to take you around my sewing room and show you what I've accomplished because I feel like I've shown you what I was working on and what I accomplished as I accomplished it. But I will do a brief summary. So I started and finished the habit shirt. I made major progress on the skirt for the riding habit ensemble. I finished the Regency dress. I almost finished the 1630s dress. I just have to sew one more seam and then it's finished. I draped the Regency cape and the 1630s cape and the riding habit vest and the riding habit jacket. So now I'm ready to have a big mock-up party today and hopefully finalize the patterns for those so I can get started on all of those garments in the coming week. The only thing I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get to are the hats because I promised you finished hats in this video and I've like not even spoken of the hats and that's because I haven't even worked on the hats. I've definitely been focusing on the projects that have to be done by Christmas. Christmas, and the hats don't have to be done until January. So I'm hoping that they'll make an appearance in another one of these weekly vlogs, but it might not be the upcoming one, just because I think I'm going to be scrambling to finish up the capes and the coats that I want done before the 24th, which is only 10 days away. And since I've now edited this video, I can vouch for the fact that it's very long, so I'm not going to ramble on for too much longer. But before I go, I just want to say thank you to all my patrons. I'll have a whole bunch of their names on screen, but I want to give a special shout out to my top tier patrons, who are... Jordan Carpenter, Tracy Smith, Heidi Neiser, Tabitha Langston, Dallas, Courtney F., Dot Cosplay, Mo Quintana, and Sharon Cyrus. These are actually the credits from October because I'm really behind, and the credits from November will be in the next video. But a huge thank you to everyone who has contributed to my Patreon. It makes videos like this one and projects like the ones featured in this video possible, and I wouldn't be able to do any of it without you. So thank you so much, and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'd love it if you could give this video a comment with your thoughts, and maybe subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. And if not, then I understand that as well. <laughs> But thanks again for watching and I will talk to all of you in another Progress Lagmas very soon.